In the US, if you're over 50 years old, you're eligible for a second COVID booster. And come fall, more of us could be rolling up our sleeves. But do we actually need a fourth jab? I'm going to break down what's known and what's not about the science of additional boosters and explain how a mysterious immune system defender is confounding experts and stirring up a debate over booster recommendations. Let's start with the preliminary data the FDA looked at before authorizing a second booster shot for people over 50 in late March, four months after getting their first booster. In that study of nearly 400,000 patients, researchers in Israel found that a fourth dose increased protection against severe COVID. But it only looked at outcomes in people who were slightly older, 60 and over, and only up to a month after getting that fourth jab. Beyond that, there isn't a lot of data you can point to to say that, um, that we need a booster in people 50 and older, um, at least not healthy people with no comorbidities, you know, with healthy immune systems. That's John Weary, the director of the Institute for Immunology at the University of Pennsylvania. Other researchers have also questioned the new guidance. When regulators authorized the first round of boosters, they looked at antibody levels to determine whether and when additional shots were needed. Antibodies wane with time, and infections were expected to rise going into the holidays, which did happen. Antibodies are easy to measure quickly in hundreds or thousands of people. That's why they're the go-to measure for understanding how protected we are against COVID at a population level. Scientists are working to fill in that knowledge gap by tracking another immune fighter. They're called T-cells, and their job is to kill infected cells, which prevents the virus from spreading further in your body. And like antibodies, they spring into action after we get sick. Specifically, the COVID vaccines train T-cells to look for the virus's spike protein. That's the structure that helps the virus get into cells, and that's also the target for antibodies. When you get vaccinated, your cells pump out non-infectious versions of the COVID-19 virus's spike protein. Special immune system cells called dendritic cells find and chew up those spike proteins. Then they carry those snippets back to the lymph nodes. There, the dendritic cell eaters present their loot to a flow of T cells. T cells that recognize those snippets multiply forming an army of millions. Those killer T cells then spread throughout the body. Some take up residence in the nose, lungs, or other organs, waiting for viral invaders. Others go home to the lymph nodes. Then when you actually get infected, your trained T cells respond within a day or two. They look for signs of inflammation, a telltale sign that infected cells are nearby. When they recognize infected cells, they kill them off. John's research shows that T cells persist for six months after two vaccine doses. And not only are they durable, but they're pretty stable. That is, their numbers are not changing very much over time. Preliminary data from his lab suggests that T cells may stick around for a year, much longer than antibodies. And it's because of that longevity that scientists are hopeful that by tracking T cell counts, it'll give them a better understanding of if and when a booster is needed. Part of the T cell and booster mystery comes down to time. As my friend Jared Hopkins, who covers vaccines and the pharmaceutical industry for the Wall Street Journal, reminded me, the vaccines have only been widely available for a little over a year. So beyond that, we're in uncharted territory. The virus itself has only been around for two years. And though it sometimes feels like decades. Another challenge? John and others told me that measuring T cells requires special equipment and is really labor intensive. The technology to measure them and how well they work at the same scale as antibodies just doesn't exist right now. But that's why we don't know as much about T cell changes over time and can't use that information to guide our decisions on boosters. That could change. John told me that companies are working on scaling up T cell analysis platforms to provide that critical information. So let's go back to that first question. Do we actually need a fourth jab? Jared told me that we're in a really gray area right now when it comes to second boosters, but... U.S. regulators uh, are eyeing a fall campaign for boosters for the U.S. broadly, uh, people under 50. That is uh, our understanding of what we've reported. Virologists and public health experts he and I spoke to agreed they wouldn't cause harm, so that's good. Instead, the concern is that by getting them too often, we're not getting as much benefit out of them. So the big question is, what should the optimal spacing be? The answer will hinge on what we find out about T-cell dynamics. 
and whether we're able to measure that across thousands of people rather than dozens like we do right now. That's important so we can link T-cell levels to levels of infection across entire populations. If preliminary data holds up about how sturdy our T-cell reserves are, we could space out our booster shots more than six months apart with more confidence. The expectation for now is that we're going to need shots on a yearly basis. That's because even if our T-cells are stable, the virus is not. The virus doesn't care about any of this. The virus continues to evolve. It's this game of, of playing hide and seek, basically. In the future, we could have vaccines that target multiple strains of the virus. Plus, companies are working on nasal spray vaccines, which could in theory help T-cells be in the right place at the right time if we get sick. 